This is just another reminder of why we've got to be constantly vigilant and why Republicans and Democrats you know, have to come together in Washington around making sure that law enforcement have the tools available to root this out. As long as ISIS is there, it doesn't take someone actually traveling across the ocean in order to become radicalized. They can simply use uh, that fight in order to do damage to us without ever leaving the United States. Senator Chris Murphy, the Connecticut Democrat who serves on the Foreign Relations Committee, appearing on the Situation Room on CNN yesterday, reacting to the arrest of three terror suspects, two in New York and one in Florida. With more on the story, let's bring in former New York police detective Thomas Ruskin. We're rejoined by former prosecutor Daniel Hockheiser and by our guest for the entire hour, Larry Elder from Newsmax LA. So Tom, Let's begin with you. Sounds like the FBI was all over these guys, even prompting a third roommate to become an informant. Is this just a case of good old-fashioned police work? It, it sounds to me like it was a good fashion, old-fashioned police work as well as intelligence. It shows us that our government and our law enforcement officials are looking at every possible scenario and finding those people who are looking to do damage and terroristic acts on our homeland. And in this case, it worked. We don't know where else it'll lead as of yet. It looks like they brought it down or arrested the people very, very early based on their actions. And at this point in time, we'll see where this investigation leads to other people. Tom, do you think the Muslim American community, especially in New York, the scene of 9-11, has done enough to aggressively let the authorities know when there are suspicious people in their community? The answer to your question is I think that there could be better communication, but I think that it has to work on both sides. I think law enforcement has to basically build up those communications and that trust on law enforcement side, and the Muslim community and the rather, you know, different groups around the New York City area have to work with law enforcement to make sure that nothing happens in our country again. Tom and Dan, there's another big case, and Tom, we want your expertise on this. The reports from the UK is that Jihadi John, a British-born, uh, actually a Kuwaiti-born British man in his mid-twenties has been identified. His name is Mohammed Mwazi. Now that we know who this guy is, Tom, how do you think the Brits or we might go about catching him? Well, I think the, the fact of the matter is probably intelligence and law enforcement people have known his name for a while. Just because it was released today to us uh, doesn't add to his capture. At this point in time, I'm sure since he originally beheaded somebody, they've been looking for him. And I think it'll add to the chances of catching him now that his name's out there and that everyone knows who he is and they can put out pictures of him. Dan, apparently they knew his name for some time, but withheld it. What was the logic behind not telling us the name until just now? Well, they, they don't want to uh, impede the integrity of the investigation. Uh, they want to uh, uh, keep their inside information exactly that inside. They don't want it publicly available, and they want to use their uh, resources to track this person down, which apparently they did successfully, and now it wouldn't be... Uh, surprised if uh, confidential informants and others come out of the woodwork to uh, uh, to finish that investigation. Well, it's interesting, Dan, you, you set up a, a dynamic here that I want to ask Tom about, and that is the notion that now it's been released, and it doesn't appear to be a leak that actually naming this guy may help prompt informants to, to come forward. Tom, has that been your experience in police work? Absolutely, but I think to Dan's point, which is a very good point, it's not important that we know who his name is at the point in time where intelligence and law enforcement and government officials are looking for this man. It's what's important is that they knew and that they are doing something to capture him or kill him um, in, the, in the process of capturing him. The fact of the matter is, obviously, they haven't been able to, and they're looking for the public support in saying, oh, yeah, we saw this guy in this village, in this town. Uh, Dan, the reason I ask about the, um, the role of the Muslim American community is because you look at these guys and it's so blatant. They're casually talking about murdering Obama, casually talking about joining the military, posting things on social media. It just seems to me that they're not even all that secretive about all of this. About 45 seconds to answer this one, Dan. 
And, and Larry, I, I think it's a very valid point, and I think I would take it maybe a step further than Tom discussed before with better communication. I think that really the Muslim, moderate Muslim leaders need to step up in New York, in America, and partner with our law enforcement to root out this cancer, which is fundamentalist Islamic terrorism. And without their help, we're going to have a real tough time thwarting every single plot to do harm to our country. Attorney Dan Hockheiser at Newsmax New York, former NYPD Detective Tom Ruskin, who is joining us by phone. Gentlemen, we thank you for your time. Larry Elder, stay put right there at Newsmax LA, and wherever you're watching from, we hope you'll stay with us too. Up next, Congressman Kevin Kramer, the FCC moving forward on so-called net neutrality. Where on earth is the Congress? We'll talk with him when we come back.